Hello, today let us test the installation of notebook and look at it in some detail. The notebook is an amazing application which allows us to demonstrate our ideas in front of others in a very interactive way. Also, since it allows the packaging of equations and images along with the code in a single document, it makes a wonderful tool for teachers for sharing notes. To start using Notebook, we open the terminal, navigate to the path where you want to save your code and then type in IPython Notebook. If you have installed Jupyter, then you can type Jupyter Notebook. This will start a notebook server at port 8888 and fire up your web browser. I will talk about this process in a little bit detail a little while later. Once the web browser has started, you can click on New Notebook. This will create a new notebook file on your computer and open an interface where you can type in code and other text. Let us start by naming our notebook by just clicking the top title and changing the name to say Demo. These Editable regions on this web page are called cells. They allow us to input code and other formatted text for documenting the code or displaying other information. These buttons here allow us to save, cut, copy, paste, move or insert cells. You can see here that the cell type in which the cursor is placed is of type code which means that whatever we type in here will be interpreted as code. Let us do some simple calculations. A is equal to 3. Press enter. B is equal to 5. Then press enter. C is equal to 9. And I again press enter. D is equal to A multiplied by B plus C. Now we want to execute this cell, so we can either click this button or simply press enter with shift key down like I am doing now. The calculations are done and we are now in the next cell. We can type D here and press shift enter to see the value of D. Or we can use the print function to see the value of D. To create cells with formatted text, you can use various type of cells available here. But it is much easier and versatile to use markdown cell. To type simple text, just type in the text in the cell. And as usual, you can use shift enter to see the result. Also, you can double click this cell to modify it. Let us do more. Let's add a heading just by typing a hash followed by a space and then whatever text for the heading that you want. Let us add a subheading by typing two hashes followed by a space. You can similarly add sub subheading by using three hashes and so on. I think you can go up to some 6 level of sub 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 headings by using this method. You can create lists and sub lists by using hyphens like this.
You can also create enumerated lists by using numbers like this. Remember to insert extra lines between lists or they will not be formatted properly. You can make text italics by placing it between asterisks make it bold by placing it between two asterisks and make it bold and italics by placing it between three asterisks like this It is often useful to add hyperlinks to refer to other resources on internet. This can be easily done by inserting the display text in square brackets and the link in the parenthesis like this. Now if we click on the text, we will be taken to that link, Google page in this case. It is said that pictures are worth thousand words. And especially when you are demonstrating ideas, it is even more true. Adding pictures to the notebook is as simple as adding the hyperlink. Just type an exclamation mark followed by some text in square brackets, followed by the link to the image in the parenthesis. The text in the square brackets is displayed if the picture is not available or the link is invalid. Let us take some random picture link and try it out. Unfortunately, I was unable to scale the picture using markdown inside notebook. So if you need to scale the image, you can use HTML instead, which is slightly complicated but allows us to scale the image as required. Here is how you can do it. Also, adding tables using Markdown is pretty simple. Just draw the table using text symbols like so.
The baseline of whatever we have seen till now is that we can add code as well as well formatted documentation with pictures in the notebook. When we are dealing with numerical computing as we are interested in CFD, it is essential to add well formatted equations within the code. This can also be done very easily in notebook by using LaTeX. We can basically insert standard LaTeX by surrounding it by dollar symbols like so. Let's insert summation. You can change it to display style as you would do in any LaTeX documents. Let's also add our favorite 1D linear advection partial differential equation. We will come back to plotting and numerical computing inside notebook in a little while. But now let us take a detour and rewind back to see how the notebook actually works behind the scenes. This will help us to debug any notebook starting issues and allow us to understand how to use the notebook server. Also towards the end of this video I'll show you how to use notebook from a remote computer or even a mobile phone or a tablet or basically any device which can simply run any web browser. This part of the video is for those of you who want to know some details of how IPython notebook works. Please feel free to go to the next part if you are not interested. In the terminal when we run the command IPython notebook, we basically start a notebook server on our computer. This is the web server which starts on port 8888. Therefore. When you start the server, the internet firewall may block the server from starting. If you see some error message displayed in the terminal which says something like unable to open port, then you may have to allow IPython to open port 8888 in your firewall settings. I have seen this happening in Windows operating system. Even when the server is started, Without any errors, it may not be able to automatically open your web browser or you may want to use some other web browser. In this case, you can simply copy the address 127.0.0.1.8888 into the web browser's address bar. The notebook server is responsible for communicating with the client and receiving the data from the cell being executed, which in our case is the web browser running on the same computer. The web server is also the one which actually does all the work of executing the cells and sending the rendering information back to the web browser. Therefore, the server knows all about the IPython syntax and the libraries installed on the computer. The client on the other hand is our web browser like Firefox or Google Chrome or Internet Explorer which is responsible for displaying the information received from the server on the web page. The client is also responsible for sending the text entered into the cells to the server. The client therefore does not know anything about IPython syntax or the libraries available on the computer. It just interprets the text inside the cells as some characters only. Here it may not seem like two separate systems as we are running the server as well as the client on the same machine. However, towards the end of this video, we will see how to run client that is the web browser on a remote computer. Well, it's not super important to know the details of internal workings of notebook for using it, but it may interest you to know the details and may help you to debug some simple issues in installation. Okay, so let's do some numerical stuff and plotting now. 
First, let us import the required libraries as we did in our previous video on Spider. Let's import NumPy and Matplotlib. Let's create an array x of 100 uniformly distributed numbers between 0 and 10 and another array by squaring x. And plot x versus y using plot function. We see a pop-up plot after using the show function. It is usually useful to insert the plot inside the document itself. To do so, we can use the magic command percent pylab inline. And now we can run the same plot function again and we see that the picture is displayed inside the web page itself. One last thing before we leave this notebook is to understand that the server remembers all the cells that you have run till this point and therefore it may be essential sometimes to restart the kernel to clear history and avoid any unwanted side effects. To do so, you can click on kernel menu and click restart. This will not delete any cells but the server will forget all the history and variables from the memory. Then you can simply click on cell menu and click run all to re-evaluate all the cells again sequentially. There are a lot of other very interesting things that you can do in Notebook. But I will leave it to you guys to learn and explore further. To stop the Notebook, save your work, close the web browser, press Ctrl C at the terminal prompt and press Y. Finally, let's explore another important feature of Notebook which makes it so unique and useful amongst all other programming tools available. In fact, it is this feature which I like the most. It is the capability to use Notebook from any device which is able to run a web browser like mobile phones and tablets. For example, I can run the Notebook server on my lab computer and use Notebook from all over my college campus from any device from any Wi-Fi connection without having to bother that the required libraries may not be installed on the device running the web browser. By default, the Notebook server does not allow any other device to access the computer obviously as a safety feature but if you are running the server inside a temporary folder then it can be safely used please use this feature cautiously as it can allow your computer to be accessed by others if not used correctly to access the notebook remotely you have to create a new profile First create a temporary folder somewhere on your computer. Then navigate to the folder and type the command ipython profile create remote access. This will create a new profile named remote access. You may choose any other name other than remote underscore access. 
Then open the config file associated with the notebook inside this profile. This file is placed inside uh, the folder .ipython in your home directory. Depending on the operating system, it will be placed at another location. I will use gedit to open the config file by typing this command gedit and then the path where the config file is placed. So once you open this file, uncomment the line with IP address and change it to uh, star so that this notebook can be accessed from any IP address. Also uncomment the lines with notebook underscore dir so that only that particular folder is accessible remotely and nothing else is exposed. Now you can restart the notebook with the command ipython notebook hyphen hyphen profile remote underscroll access and now you should be able to use notebook from any device on your network by typing in the IP address and port of the server like uh, 192.168.0.100 uh, and colon 8888 where 8888 is the port at which the notebook is running on the server and 192.168.0.100 is the IP address of the server so obviously you need to remember this IP address if you need to access it from somewhere else hmm. so this has been a rather long video and I hope you guys enjoyed learning about this awesome tool for programming and teaching in the next few videos, I'll be going through the numerical libraries available in Python and after that we will finish off this series with plotting and post-processing CFD results. Thanks for watching through the complete video and I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bye.